Welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And I'm bringing in a special guest today, former Major League player, played with the Red Sox and the Diamondbacks, Blue Jays. And I used to hit, try to hit really, really hard ground balls at this gentleman, Mr. Shea Hillenbrand. Shea, how are we doing today, sir? I'm doing awesome, man. This is so cool to uh, experience this and be on here with you. I, it's uh, just get you know trying to get into all this stuff of social media wasn't a big thing with us, right? Who would have ever thought of a podcast when we were playing baseball, right? We just wanted to play, right? We just were out there being athletes, having fun. Uh, you know, this gives us a chance to sit down and you know catch up with guys to see what uh, what they've been doing. It has been a long time, Shay, since we've geez even been on the field together. It feels like it's been. 30, 40 years, right? I mean, we're, we're young. It, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And I'm so grateful that social media was not around when I played because uh, it would have been a whirlwind. It, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it's, I, th I think it's changed the sport in general. I mean, we, you know, we were coming up trying to, you know, uh, scouting reports were, were able to get through. I'm not sure how long it took at that point. But now it seems like every pitch they've got it. Uh, you know, with now the, how they're, you know, they're translate transmitting signs to pitchers and catchers. It's probably every pitch that they're doing it, you know, and it, it's just changed the way we look at the game. And it's, um, I don't know if it's for a good thing or for a bad thing. Um, social media can be a bad thing. Um, but other than that, man, we've just been, you know, just trying to, trying to stay the course, right? And trying to, you know, get baseball back to where it was when we played. So what have you been up to these days? I've uh, been with the whirlwind uh, since I left Major League Baseball. I left with uh, a fair amount of money and experience and a, a success, and and life really humbled me through that process. So when I left the game, um, I left in my prime. I just I just walked away because I was just I, w I was hurt. I was had a lot of pain inside myself and and frustration and regret, resentment, all those feelings uh, uh, packaged together put me in a position to to run numb and flee. And I attached to you know, that pain to the game because I didn't know who I was through that process. And, and I bought a zoo. So <laughs> I think I might be the first uh, major league baseball player to leave baseball and buy a zoo. So I bought a $5 million horse farm down here in Arizona and I accumulated 300 farming exotic animals. I had camels, kangaroos, llamas, alpacas, monkeys, raccoons. I had everything. I felt like Steve Irwin uh, hitting a baseball, uh, was fun, but this was amazing because this was life transformation stuff for uh, children in our community. So I did that for four years, and through that process, um, I pretty much lost everything in my life. I, I, I was I, I lost all the millions I made playing baseball. I lost my family, um, everything, and I was sitting there uh, at the end of the rope, uh, probably ten years ago. And not knowing what to do, driving around, just, uh, man, like, what's the purpose to life? Because I didn't accomplish one childhood dream of playing Major League Baseball. I accomplished two. I was that crazy kid in fifth grade that Mr. Murphy went around and he said, hey, guys, let's dream big. What do you guys want to do? And I'm I'm vigorously raising my hand in the back of the room. And, and I said, pick me, pick me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to play Major League Baseball and I'm going to own a zoo. <laughs> and all my classmates laughed at me. And I said, I'll show you, fool. And uh, I went out and did that. But through the process, uh, what I was really doing was trying to, like I said, run them and flee from those pain and pressure points in my life. And, and you know, life got me. About eight years ago, I, was, I found myself on the floor of a van after accomplishing all that stuff. And uh, I was parked outside my ex-wife's house. And laying there, here, here lies a guy that so many people envy, um, motionless, after overdosing on drugs and alcohol. And as I'm laying there, the soul's leaving the top of my head and I'm clinging onto my last breath and the thoughts going through my mind are, what would your parents think if you left this world today, Shay? Well, like you're a failure, you're a loser. You had everything and you've lost everything. I was scrounging up change out of the cup holder of my car just to feed my kids Little Caesars pizza after being on top of the world. And, and like, you're a hypocrite. What, could, what kind of dad would do this to his kids? You said you quit baseball for your kids, but you didn't do that. You did that because you couldn't handle the pressures of life. So, um, man, I just, that pain became so severe. I finally just let go. Oh, I don't know if I died or if I fell asleep. And, and, and you know, it, like, gosh, the, the process that I was going through and being there by myself as my kids were going to school, telling all their friends that their dad played major league baseball for the diamondbacks, because I live out here in Arizona and it's just like, man, I, I, the game had become my name, my identity. I'm nothing if I don't have baseball. So I let go. 
But by the grace of God, the next day, the sun peered through the front windshield of my van and I came to, and, and I realized that I didn't have any side effects, no nothing. And the concoction of pills and alcohol I consumed the night before, I should have had two options, either dead or in the hospital. And it was an aha moment. And I wasn't an alcoholic. I'm not a, I'm not a drug addict. I was just trying to, to, to flee from that pain because I couldn't articulate it. I didn't understand it. I felt like I had no one around to help me out. So... I was faced with two very difficult decisions. I had to take back control and own my life. And the way I did that is by, by getting into momentum. I had to, like we do playing baseball, I had to stack little wins on top of each other. And, and when you get the momentum, life is about momentum. You'll get rewarded. So, you know, I got rewarded by strategic people coming into my life and providing me direction and accountability. When I did that and started to, to look at Shea Hillenbrand, the person, and not Shea Hillenbrand, the performer on a major league baseball field, I discovered that there was a deeper version of myself. I discovered that I had gifts and talents. I had a voice. I had a passion and a mission, a whole new lease on life to go out there and use my experiences to go out there and help other people find their voice, help other people find what life is about, finding a calling, a purpose, a mission to go out there and stand above what we're doing. So now I have a coaching program. I teach, I speak, I coach, and, and I, I have finally found it. I went on a seven-year journey and and it was extremely difficult, just like getting to the major leagues. It was difficult to find who I actually was outside of what I did as a major league baseball player. So I'm on an absolute mission right now. The hunger I had to play major league baseball, um, I finally found my smile. I found fulfillment. I found purpose. I found joy. And I'm just on a mission to be able to go and give back and help other people out through that process. So that's a little bit of a journey <laughs> uh, of, of what I've been on since playing major league baseball. <laughs> now, you're, you know, I've just, you know, remember, you, you you always, you know, playing against you, you always seemed really stoic. You know, it wasn't, you know, you weren't, didn't seem to be smiling like you are now. You know, you see the, you know, you've watched some of the stuff on uh, your social media and everything. It just, you know, it, it all seems to come around, you know, now understanding, you know, what you've been through um, and seeing that, understanding that, you know, that you're right, though. It's something you find your identity in one thing. And it's not what you, that's not what you want, right? Because it, it, it's going to end. Baseball is going to end, right? It's going to, everything's going to end. And, you know, the stories that you have, you're able to help, you know, those down, down the road, even starting at this moment. But I mean, so when you're playing, you know, coming up playing baseball, did, were you, did you ever um, vocalize this to anybody at all? Coming up playing at all? I couldn't. You couldn't? I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't vocalize anything because, as you know, the organization says, if you hit, we'll find you a position. If you hit, you'll get there. If you go out there and do what you need to do on a daily basis, we'll advance you. And if you perform, uh, those opportunities will come, uh, come come in front of you. And that's all I figured that, that if I just did that, if I just had success, if I just got to the next level, I would get the admiration, the approval, the acceptance, and the love from my father, because that's all I was seeking my whole life was that thereof of, of being good enough in my father's eyes. And I think so many men fall victim of that. And that pain, you know, the pain for the stories I told myself all the way from 14 years old uh, for when I moved from beautiful Southern California to the hot desert of Arizona going into high school my dad says we're moving he drops a bombshell on me and he says you know we're we're, we're, we're gone and the story I told myself was I'm not good enough I'm not lovable and my dad doesn't love me and and I, I use that to prove I use that for fuel I use that to drive me to the top and when 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 you kind of empty and when you don't understand what you're going through ego fills that gap and ego stands for edging God out and and what I realized through that process is that you could find a success of what you're trying to achieve with ego with that pain but if you can't articulate it if you can't understand what's driving you you will never find consistent, sustainable success, and you will never find fulfillment through that process. I remember my rookie season. I was coming in the clubhouse, and Dante Bichette, his last year in Boston, he says, sit down, son. And uh, I started talking. I'm like, man, this is Dante Bichette, man. Like, I used to always watch him playing for the Rockies and all that stuff. Like, he's, like, amazed, like, insane how good he knows about uh, hitting and everything he knows through the process of becoming successful. And he says, You're, I'm going to retire this year, and I'm going to watch you on TV. You're going to make $100 million playing this game. He says, mark my words, because the last person I told that was Todd Helton. And look what he did. And I just took it for a grain of salt. I put my head down and I worked and, and I didn't achieve that. I, I made $20 million playing a game and I left in the prime. And, and when I left, I, I became infatuated, obsessed with discovering how and why that Shea Hillenbrand did not make 
his full potential. I reached one fifth of my potential. The money's not the matter. It's the ability to be able to have uh, to reach and potential. And I, and I did this deep dive of discovering and figuring out like, dude, there's gotta be a purpose of what's going on. And, and it comes down to your belief system as major leaguers. We all believe that given the chance we'll play we, if we get the opportunity, we're going to play, but I didn't understand who I was outside of what I did. And your belief systems form from the perspective form from the stories, from the experiences of your life. So it's like I reverse engineered this process and, and I went through and I was able to rewrite history. I didn't change what happened in my life through uh, as I went up. Um, what I did was change the perspective. And that's where our power lies in the perspective that we have. Like, like I was the first person that Theo Epstein traded from the Red Sox. I, I got on the radio before he traded me. I said, trade me now, faggot. I mean, it's extremely humbly, extremely like it's, it's nonsense. It's just like, and I get in a fight with John Gibbons in a clubhouse and, and I'm trying to prove this and prove that. Don't you guys know who I am? Don't you guys realize what I bring to the team? Like, this is like my identity. Like, like I'll sell my soul to go out there day in, day out to put myself in a position so we could win. But I was angry and extremely embarrassed, extremely uh, like, like looking back, like on that character, Shea Hillenbrand that played major league baseball, it's like, man, like, like I was embarrassed of the things I did, but when I look at it now, it was just a crying little boy crying for help and looking for uh, someone to help him out. And I couldn't do that. And the reason why I couldn't trust other people, because as since major leaguers say, I can't trust you because you always want something from me. Family wants something from me. I've given away millions of dollars from, to family in France. And everybody wants to attach to, to your star status, your success. And, and what I really realized is that was just a cover up. That was a veil because I couldn't trust myself. That's why I couldn't trust anybody else. I couldn't trust myself when I played Major League Baseball, whether it was on the road, cheating on my wife, or putting myself in a position not to handle the pressures of what that level offers. And I sort of came to that. I was a victim of that. And it really, really tore me apart, bringing me one breath away and, and wanting not to even live anymore. So um, I couldn't trust anybody else. Um, so I couldn't ask for help. Have you... Uh run into anybody else uh, down this path, no names or whatnot, as far as, you know, how you felt playing. I mean, have guys, professional guys you've played with reached out to you, even, even organizations are saying, Hey, would you come, come speak to us just to, just to talk? Because a lot of people don't believe that this is really something that guys go through, right? They think, okay, you're, 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 you're a professional athlete making millions of dollars. You don't have any issues, right? And I know people don't like to, a lot of people don't like to talk about it because, um, you know, you said they were just more concerned with trying to get you through the system. Get, if you're going to keep doing your job, we'll, we'll, we'll turn a blind eye to this as long as you continue to do your job. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. I mean, and now do you, do you, uh, do you see that? Do you have guys, you know, reaching out wanting to, Hey, can you help me? How do you do this? How do you, you know, how, how are you able to get through this and not, you know, cause right, they're always with, when you know, with your success story, there's always the opposite, right. Of guys that didn't make it. Right. And I'm sure you've come across that. But, you know, you know, explain just how you are able to, are you able to see it when people even come talk to you of knowing that that person's got a problem and I can help. 100 percent. And thanks for asking that. I appreciate that opportunity to share this uh, be, with your audience, because this is huge. And, and you know, it's you guys are poor, poor, poor major leaguer, right? Like pull up your bootstraps. I, w I wish I had your problems. But if you only knew, if you only knew what I had to go through to get to where I am right now, you would say hell no. And I would like I said, I was embarrassed. But but I, seven, eight, nine, 10 years of, of, of processing and going through this stuff after I left the game has given me a position of understanding articulation. And, and I really want to pioneer this space of just sharing and just, just bringing a voice to the guys that, that we, that we shared the locker or clubhouse with and, and minor league baseball players, because uh, it's, it's, it's real. The struggle's real. And we see it, you know, like, like Jason, uh, Jeremy Giambi recently just took his life because the, what what he was going through, Ryan Friel, we played with, um, slated to be a high school baseball coach in Florida and, and a beautiful family, and he took his own life, and and I almost did that, and 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 it's I understand the feeling, I understand the pressure, I understand the pain and the guilt and the shame, and and and, and not wanting to do anything. So uh, I do have that. I have a really good team around me 
uh, of people, and, and I have a mission to be able to go out there and just help these guys. It's the hardest thing I ever did, brother, was to be able to ask people for help. The hardest thing that I ever did was to be able to be transparent and vulnerable. So you know what, dude? Like, I am freaking lost right now, man. I don't know anything. I have no, but it's like we're treated like gods, man. I had little girls in the stands, like, holding up signs, will you marry me, Shay? I'm doing autograph signings for $10,000 an hour, and girls come to the table crying and shaking. How do you process through that? When you they don't see that pain, that 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 that, that resentment, that hurt, and and that pressure and that identity. So, um, yeah, I have guys coming to me. I have minor leaguers. I have major leaguers DMing me, and uh, right now, currently, and and obviously, we'll keep that uh, uh, just between us. And 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 it's uh, it's awesome. I, I never thought ever in my life I thought I'd be doing this. I thought I'd ride off in the sunset with my millions and live in my custom home, 15,000 square foot house I had uh, designed and, and multiple hundreds of animals and behind my walls so nobody can get to me. But uh, God had different plans. And uh, once I discovered what I'm really put here for, um, uh, I'm just like I said, I'm on a mission to help these guys because, it, like I said, the struggle is completely real, brother. It is, you know, it is as far as, you know, even like you said, the mental health side of here in all sports, right? People, you know, walking away or just being, being able to speak up. I think uh, some tennis players, right, or uh, have, have dealt with it, I think, recently of coming out and just saying, look, you know, this is, an, this is a real issue. I mean, and then, you know, and that's your, your, your job, your story. You know, we always talk of being an athlete. We want to be able to share, you know, my, you were concerned with uh, the baseball side of it. Yeah, the baseball exactly. side of it is my part of your story, but that's not the Shea Hillenbrand that you want people to know. You want the, you want people to know that I'm, that Shea Hillenbrand here. I'm able to help you to not because once you've been down that path, you know how to help people get out of it, right? You you know. But the problem is, like you said, when that does happen, people start drawing lines with you, right? They want nothing to do with you, and I'm sure you've lost a lot of friends, you know, because of you know you were Shea, you were Shea the you know what. Wherever you were, whatever the drugs and the alcohol stuff was now, okay, well, nope, he's turned his life around. Well, no, I don't want to be any part of it. He, he was tied to something bad. I don't want to be a part of it. And it's right. And it, it's the good and the bad to come with it. hundred percent. And, uh, I really, I don't know. I never really had that many friends. I've always been, uh, uh, introverted. I've, uh, my whole life. And I've always tried to find my escape through athletics. And, and I never knew how to carry on a conversation. Like, 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 Bro, like I was flying to the All-Star game in 2005 in a Citation 10 jet. I thought I was pimping. I thought I was bad. It's the fastest civilian jet in the world. I'm flying 64,000 feet going 640 miles an hour to Detroit, Michigan, getting ready to play in front of tens of millions of dollars, my childhood dream. And I'm on that jet by myself. And I look out the window and I'm like, man, this is all life has to offer. This is all it is. Like, really? So it doesn't matter what you go to. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. If you don't understand who you are through that process, I mean, the greatest battles that, that I ever fought every single night wasn't underneath the lights, wasn't with the popcorn, wasn't in front of 40,000, wasn't on ESPN. It was the internal battles, the internal battles of fighting of, of, of who I really was as a person because whenever we go to the ballpark, I have a fielding coach, I have a hitting coach, I have a, a video analyst, I have an orthopedic sir. We have all these resources. We have a chef, we have a masseuse, we have a chiropractor, we have the athletic trainers we have all the data all the information we could ever do to focus on uh shea hillenbrand the performer or kevin mitch the performer and not shea hillenbrand the person so whenever i left the stadium each and every night i was by myself i was all alone and I didn't know who I was. And the first word out of my mouth every single morning when I'd wake up in a $4 million mansion playing for the Anaheim Angels, making $6 million is the F word. And my wife at the time's like, what's wrong with you, man? And I says, you'll never know what's wrong with me. You'll never understand what's wrong with me. You'll never understand what the heck I'm going through. And it's just troubling. It's just, you just want to give up. You just want to just escape. You just want to leave. And, and, and it's sad because... The, the greatest opportunity I ever had as a major league baseball player, I missed out on. And that opportunity that I had as a major league baseball player that I missed out on was using that platform to speak life and using that platform to impact and inspire so many people now. So I think in the game today, the biggest challenge that we have is a disconnect between the players and the fans. And that, 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 that needs to come back because it used to be baseball cards. It used to be autograph signings and it used to be all these things, but now it's done through social media. So I believe the players now, like if you, 
you want to stand apart and create a brand, um, there are a few players now that do it very well. Uh, we need to put a team around these players to be able to go out there and and share that connection so these fans can really get to know these people at a different level other than cracking home runs on the Major League Baseball diamond. Yeah, I know. With you know, we, I was talking with Orlando about this early, early before, and uh, you know, the, these nets now, right? It's almost like you're talking to somebody through plate glass. There's no more social interaction, right? As far as you know, being able to be out there with the guys, you know, I, you you like that as a player. You know, the fans were able to enter, you know, to just be around you to to do that. Now it's well, uh, you, you said it's social media. Well, how do I really know this is actually, you know, Shay Hillenbrand? How do I know this is such and such? How do, it, it's not right. It's almost it's it's so informal, right? You, you, the best way to want to to really have the ability to, to touch somebody and reach somebody is in person, right? You can actually see read emotions at that point, and you know, and it's tough because we as athletes we're not here. F- well, the fans aren't here for us. We're here for them, and it's our job exactly. to help them to one to to understand that you know just because we're at the highest level doesn't mean you guys can't be on the level with us. Right. And I think sometimes they put us up there. You know, you were talking about it being I'm um, Shea Hillary and I'm, I'm this this guy up here. But really, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. I really need to be right here. And some people don't want to hear it. Right. Some people are just at whatever. It's just somebody. He's just somebody just it's crying this and that. But it's not. And you're right. And it, and it takes a bigger man to be able to come out and say, you know what? Man, I, this is the problem that I'm dealing with. This is and hopefully my story can help you know, from this moment forward, moving, changing somebody. So when you're, so your last year playing, did you know you were going to walk away from it? I hated every part of it. I, I, fin- I started the season uh, in Anaheim playing for the angels, actually DH. And, um, and I remember one specific situation where I was facing a lefty in Anaheim. I can't remember who it was. And he grooves me like an 87 mile an hour fastball middle in. And I just do a jam shot back to the pitcher in a three, one count. And I mean, that, I, that, that, that's where I made my money. That's that was, I, I could do that in my sleep. And I trained countless hours to be able to p- prepare myself for that situation. And, and Mike Sosha calls me into the office after the game. And he says, what the hell's going on, man? We're not paying you to do that. And I, I couldn't even say anything. I couldn't even share it. I couldn't even allow the organization, organization to see where I'm coming from because you're so scared that if they find out information about you that's not conducive, that's not productive, that's not positive, then you have a, you have a fear that um, they might use that against you to get rid of you. So whether the organization provides a mental coach or if you confide into a hitting coach or, or a strength coach or whatever that might be, you got to be very careful how you tread those waters because um, that information very well can get back to the organization and that, that they can use that to get rid of you. So you just stuck in this island by yourself and the guy next to you is fighting for himself and and i'm fighting for myself and 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 everybody's fighting to stay at that level and it's very difficult to understand how to articulate that because if i go there if i go there with the shea hillenbrand the person and if i start to try to address that if i start to try to say you know what dude i am scared i am lost i don't know what i'm doing i couldn't even talk to people I mean, I, I'd hit home runs. I remember hitting a home run against Mike Messina in Yankee Stadium in the seventh inning and, and putting us ahead with the Red Sox and, and, and a three-run home run. And I come back to the dugout, and the fans are yelling, Hillen Brown, I still taste your mom's whatever from last night. And, and I'm rocking it, and I go out to dinner with the $4,000 dinner after the game with my homeboys, and, and I couldn't even get up uh, at, the, at the supper table to walk across the restaurant to use the restroom in fear of everybody staring at me. I'd almost go to the bathroom in my pants, pee in my pants every single time because had no self-confidence zero self-confidence as Shea Hillenbrand the person so that's how and that's why you saw that stoic person that's why you saw man I was angry I was frustrated I didn't know what to do I, I was lost and and it was really interesting I mean this just it's sad and it, my whole last year I, I just I didn't I didn't want to play when I left Toronto uh, after that uh, the altercation in the clubhouse with John Gibbons um, I was done I, I would, I mean, I just, I, I can't go anymore. I, I, I don't even know how to operate this stuff. And that's Shea Hillman, the person, but you can't, you know, because I, I got to hang on. I got to hang on to this because if I don't have this, if I don't perform tonight, I'm not going to have a job. And if I don't have a job, I don't have that identity. And that's so scary. And so many guys, and I fell victim to this too, is like, you can't really plan for the future. 
you can't really think about, okay, after the game, if I just put $6 million away or $7 million away and invested in this and that, I could set myself up for the next chapter. But it's so difficult for us Major League Baseball players, I know speaking for myself, to even think about that because I couldn't think about myself not having the identity of Major League Baseball player because when that was stripped from me, when I was when I had to come out from behind that veil of Major League Baseball, it sucked. It was just PTSD. It was just... I don't know who I am. I'm, I'm lost, and I, I just, I just want to, I want to die. Did I mean like we? I told you earlier about people knowing that have been there can understand it. Did anybody ever say anything to you at all when you were playing that that had been no. through something like that and just said, "Hey Shay, I, I know," or, or I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, just trying to even have a conversation. If somebody even, "Hey Shay, I know what you're going through," and then what are you talking about? Or, you know, was it just one of those where you just. Or like I said, I don't even know what your thought process was. Was, was everything really just turned off in your peripheral of just as opposed to what you were trying to, to work on? Yeah, it's everything shut off. Uh, I mean, I woke up at nine o'clock every day. I went to bed at midnight every day. I could tell you verbatim what I did day in, day out, every single day. There's no such thing as superstition playing baseball. It's routine, right? It's routine from getting your mindset from a generalized focus to a specific focus. So I can go out there and perform and not let the pressures and everything else on the outside come in and impede on yourself while you're performing. So I just put my head down. I didn't, I mean, I remember when we come in off the field uh, in Toronto that you pop the beers, you you uh, turn on the music and all the guys are like, Hilly, hey, hey you're going to go out with us tonight, Shay? And I'm like, dude, I don't even hang out with you in here. What makes you think I'm going to hang out with you out there when I have a choice? I'm not going to hang out with you tonight. And they're like, aha, you're funny because they always deem me the a-hole in the clubhouse. In the center. But I'm thinking like, I'm not joking, bro. I'm serious, dude. Like, like I hate myself so much that in return – that becomes a cancer in the clubhouse. That that in turn becomes friction in the clubhouse. That in turn becomes a threat to other people, uh, whether it's coaches or management, because, I mean, I have story after story after story after story after experience after experience of stuff that I've done. And it's just like, what were you thinking, Shay? And I could tell you exactly what I'm thinking now. It, it's just... I was lost and I wouldn't listen to anybody. And I was too scared to let people understand because if, if they really saw what I really was on the inside, then they'd really see that, you know what? He's really not this great major league baseball player. And if I'm not this great major league baseball player that that's had success and it has this platform then I might not get the love from my father, I might not get the approval from my father. So these internal battles and these internal stories and these internal narratives that I tell, I can't share that with you, bro. Because, and that's just like you said, it's like, dude, I don't give a shit. I don't care what you say, dude. Like, like whatever, go out there and perform. I remember, I remember coming off of a bus, uh, getting off the bus and going into the hotel lobby in San Francisco at the St. Regis. I was playing for the D box and, and I always had to use the, I had to always had to pee because I'm always drinking and all the uh, water and everything. And, and just trying to feel, and I go in to use the, go use the, and somebody's, in the fetal position, it was one of our our pitchers. He was in the fetal position on the floor, uh, in the in the in the in the toilet area, the stall, like crying, like belly aching, crying. And, and I thought it was a bum off the street. So, you know, San Francisco is, is known for that stuff. And, and I opened the door and it's his pictures, just his soul is aching and he's crying because he's struggling and he was drunk and he's, he couldn't handle the pressures. And, 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 and where I was in that situation, I says, dude, get up. You, you, you wussy. Yeah, you can say whatever you get, want. Get yeah, you're good. <laughs> Get up, man, I, you, because I'm going through my own struggles, right? We have to go out there. We have to fight. And and I, and I think as I speak out more and as I share more, um, this is common, you know, and and like you said, not many people can understand, but you got to understand if, if I share my pitfalls, if I share my struggles, if I share the challenges, then that connects with people that connects with the fans. So I've, I work with CEOs. I work with business people. I work with dads. I work with coaches. I work with people in the position to make an influence on the youth baseball players. And, and if I talk about flying a private jet and hitting a game winning home run off Mario Rivera and sitting on the field for the all-star game and doing this and that, they can't relate The people can't relate, but they can relate to the struggles. They can relate to the vulnerability and transparency. And that's what we're, where true transformation happens and impact in people's lives. So, um, like I said, man, like I was the most, the, the biggest, like, like, come on, dude, let's go. We got to do this. And now it's just like, dude, I'm on a mission to just be vulnerable. I'm, a, I'm an open book. Uh, I, like I, 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 I ruined all my life and, and I, I've, I've been able to rebuild it by the grace of God. And, and, and I'm in a, 
my dream wife, my dream house, my dream, like everything's like just amazing now. And I'm like, dude, I have to share this with people. I have to share what, you know, the trips, the tips and the tricks and the techniques that I've learned because at the end of the day, baseball is nothing, dude. Baseball is nothing. I walked away when I was 32 and you have the rest of your life and, and turning that chapter is the most difficult thing to do for a professional athlete. And, and I mean, like, like I said, I'm on fire, brother. And you, you, you go back to that situation you were talking about in San Francisco of wanting to, right? That's what we do as athletes. That's just because, you know, come on, dude, pick yourself up. You, you don't know as opposed, you know, mm-hmm. now going back, you, you know, as I said, hindsight's 2020. You want to go back, put your hand on, go, look, let's, I got you. I know where you are. I've got, you know, and that's what you're doing now. You're using your story now to, to help. You're not going to, you're not going to help every person. And I, I always look at things. If you've changed one person's life today, you've done your job. And that's all it is, right? You're not going to please everybody. Not everybody's going to want to hear your story. No, I don't care about Shea Hill and Brand what his story is. I just want to hear this. I just want to hear the juicy stuff, right? That's all. But and, on the other hand, there's people going, "Well, how can you, how can you help me?" Right? And it's that story. Everybody wants that story to be able to help relate. How they can? Hey, I don't know some. I I'm not been in that situation, but I know somebody. Hey, you could probably help them. And that's all you want to do, right? That's that's what your job is. You know, you said you were given a goal when you were born, right? There's a plan for Shea Hill and Brand. That's what it was. It was to get to 32 years old, bottom out, and then move on, right? Because the amount of lives that you can change moving forward is more than pro- what you could do when you were playing baseball, you know. And, and I and I'm sure that's a hard pill for people to swallow. Now he'd have done much more doing this. No, you never know, right? And that's and that's the beauty of it. But you said you wake up every day. What am I going to do today? Change somebody's life? How can I help somebody, right? If somebody's hearing this story, that's all it's about, right? This is the biggest thing. And, and, you know, you, and I'm sure you've been around people that have come up to you and probably been pissed off and, and everything else, but other ones just, just want to hug. Right. And that's all it is sometimes. hundred percent. It's funny you say that because, uh, when I played, I heard that my whole career, you can't play third base. You can't play defense. You can't hit you you can't get on. And I'm like, bring it, bro. Bring it. Like I am going to perform. I'm going to, I'm the only reason I'm going to perform is because I'm going to prepare. I've swung a baseball bat a million times and swing it 40, 60, 70,000 times in the off season. Uh, you're not going to beat me with preparation. That's the only reason I was able to be able to have success as a level seven player, maybe, and, and have success and compete against level tens, 11s and 12s. Like, you, you know how it is, bro. Those, those dudes in the clubhouse and our team, it's like, these guys are flipping superhuman. Like, it's just like, how is this even possible that these guys can do this? And everybody told me I couldn't do it. And I said, I don't care. So imagine that Shea Hillenbrand that was disconnected, that didn't know who he was and have that mindset of, I'm going to show you, just give me a half percent of a chance. Just give me 1% of a chance and I'm going to make an impact. So now that I found myself, now that I found fulfillment, now that I have clarity with my calling, with my vision, with my dream of what I've been put here to do and share my voice and the passion and the energy that I have. See back then that passion, the energy was feeling negativity. And when you feel negativity, it'll definitely change the atmosphere in a clubhouse for the worse. But now I walk into a place and, and that's feeling love that's feeling admiration that's feeling uh just excitement and joy and peace and patience and all that stuff now so it's like i don't i don't care what people say now i know that three people reached out to me last week and said i watched your video and i was going to commit suicide but that day and that person said they watched my video and it gave them a different perspective and i'm on a mission to help people that are one breath away from giving up, not losing their life, but just giving up and get them to understand that you're just one breath away from a breakthrough, from a trans- transformation. And if I could be like the defibrillators and the paramedics have on an ambulance, like, boom, boom, wake up, we can do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm not concerned about what people say. That's cool. And I can handle it now even more so. Because people tried to do that. I went on a forum, a really big forum where they, they, they send messages, fans, and I was like, 15,000 people, and all they tried to do is bash me. Well, what about John Gibbons? What about Theo Epstein? Well, you did this. Well, you did that. And I was an open book, and I just shared truthfully from my heart. And I even was able to switch that perspective from those guys, because if they're attacking me, there's obviously something wrong inside with them. And if I could just share my truth, yep, you know what? I did that, and I was wrong, and I felt like a piece of crap afterwards, but this is what I learned through that process, because after that, with that perspective I've had, with the things that I, the way I carried myself in the clubhouse in Toronto with John Gibbons and uh, O-Dog was there, um, that led me to the point of wanting to kill myself. So those things are, those things are so 
so important with so many people right now, especially with the pandemic, with, with mental health and so many people across the board. And there's so many fans out there that look up to us and I'm able to use that platform now, believe it or not. I can't believe it, man. Like my last year was 07, man. And it's like, it's like, like a lifetime ago and people are still like, Oh my gosh, this is Shay Hillenbrand. I'm like, yep, but only if you knew. <laughs> it's, you're right there. Cause that's, that's how it is. We, you know, we, we just, you get away from guys that you've played against for a while. You don't see them and all of a sudden it's, and I think that's how we got connected. I just saw, I think it was something on Facebook. Of, oh my gosh, yeah. Shay's, you know, Shay's doing it. And, and the beauty of what you're doing, it's not just on the baseball side. It's, it's across all sports. It can go and, you know, even first responders, you know, the military as well of what, these people deal with, you know, I think the more and more that people hear it from guys that have played, you know, that, that they're more going to start to understand it more and more. Right. Because it's, it's not just, Oh, you know, in football, they want to blame, you know, the the CT, I guess is the big thing in football. Like too many, well, maybe, maybe there is something to it. Right. Maybe there are guys that have been, uh, been through it. There was uh, baseball, the guy with the, uh, the giants. I can't, the one tried to take his life actually did. Right. Uh, Shot himself. And then I forget the gentleman's name, but, you know that you don't ever want it to come to that, but at the same time, that's going to help more people down the road from you know from what he's been through, and uh, and, and like you said, you've just this is ability that you never really even thought that. Wait, how can my problem help somebody else out? Right, that's that's the last thing. All we think about as baseball players, what you know, how can my talent, how can my abilities help everybody else? Right, we get so focused on what we're doing, we forget that maybe that's not my purpose. Right. So now you're speaking, you're, you're traveling around the country, around the world, doing this stuff, talking to people, having these interactions and and you're having fun doing it. Right. You, you weren't having oh fun gosh. playing baseball, were you? You're having fun doing Never. this, though. Right. I, I I don't like to say this, but I do it for free, but I can't do it for free <laughs> because I have five kids and a family to pay for uh, to, to support. But uh, would you find something that you're so passionate about when I wake up, brother, the, the earphones are in my in my ears. I, I, I in my truck. I, I'm just I have podcasts on. I have YouTube videos on. I have audio books on. I mean, I listen to probably, you know, the same reps and the obsession that we had to have in the batting cage and training and hitting, taking ground balls and preparing for the game. I just transformed those skill sets to this and I found something I'm super like like it's crazy like i didn't here's the guy that would just tell everybody to go to hell and get away from me and 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 screw it. like arguably one of the worst teammates possible um and it's just like dude i just want to pour into people i don't care who it is and and where it's at and and i just it's just the beginning to it and i know 100 percent i'm going to make more money now than i did playing major league baseball and that's because i'm on purpose and if you follow purpose first the profit can't not from cannot come that the money we cannot come and, and it's not about that it's about impacting and, and and adding value and it's pouring into people's lives and, and things are like today i'm going to lunch with a billionaire with a b and it's just like how does this even happen and i finally feel like i'm i've earned it i finally feel like that i deserve it i finally feel like i belong in that situation in that place of of this is who i am this is what i'm put here for and if there's any way i could find value collaborate or whatever to to help you out let's do it if not next it's just another rep in the batting cage. So now, now before it, it was it was it was low character people that I was hanging around and trying to pour into them. Then you elevate yourself to the next level. Then you're in double A. Then you're in triple A. Then you're in the big leagues. And now, now I feel like I'm on that spot of, of where I'm at in this space at that level of, of being able to make, make an impact at such a, a higher level. And it's it's you know baseball just came natural to you, right? You didn't have to. You know, some people have to fight. I mean, we, we did put in the work for it, right? But some people can, you know, they always talk about just roll out of bed and hit, right? That was our ability. We were able to do that. And this, and now what you're doing now, you had that ability as well. It was, seemed that it was one of those things you just had to let go of the thing you were trying to control the most, which was the baseball side of it, yeah. you know? And that, but like you said, you're having fun, right? You're smiling. And I don't remember seeing that playing against you. And Never. like you said, it was one of those Never. things where, you just you hope that man gosh right you go back man i really wish i would have done but no that's you you know you move forward right you don't look behind you and and you see where you can where where this where this is going to take you right so so the found is it a foundation that you've created for with your name or what is what's the two on the hat as well 
Oh, two V's, voice of the voices. I was walking through my petting zoo um, one day. Thank you for asking me. The first person ever to ask that. And I love it because you pay attention to detail. So you're a <laughs> professional athlete. So um, I was walking through my, my, my petting zoo when I was losing everything in my life. And I had an audible voice go through my head. And I refer to that as the Holy Spirit. And the audible voice says, Shay, use your voice to help other people find their voice. And it stopped me in my tracks. And not much things will stop me in my tracks because I was so stubborn. I was so type A. I was so on mission. And my life's rattling out of control. I am losing everything in my life, brother. Like I am like everything, the millions, the cars, like the the, the animals, the, the, the mission, the impact, my marriage, my kid, everything. I have three beautiful adopted children. I was losing everything. And his voice says, use your voice to help other people find their voice. And I stopped in my tracks and I said, I don't even have my voice. I don't even know what to do. But what's crazy is that I didn't realize what I was going to go through the next four years of my life. I have the goosebumps right now. And the next four years of my life, my life just raveled out of control in this spiral of nothingness to where I was living in a van, dude. I was living in a 10 passenger van and I had nowhere to go. I had so much pride and so much ego and I couldn't, I didn't know how to operate. But the only thing that got me through that time in my life is that audible voice. Shay, use your voice to help other people find their voice. It was, I was so far gone and I was so toxic. I didn't even care about my kids. I didn't even care about my family. I didn't, I cut my parents out of my whole career. I didn't have anybody. I burnt every bridge. I've done everything in the world just to, just to sabotage my world because if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it to the biggest extreme, whatever I'm going, whatever I'm pursuing. So the craziest thing is, is like, Shay, use your voice to help other people find your voice. So when I found my voice, I said, I have to create a platform. I have to create a brand. I have to create this ability to, to help people. And my, my focus and the vision that I had was helping Major League Baseball players because they have this platform just to help them find their voice and to help them find who they are and to help them dig into a, a truer version of who they are. And I know it's very difficult. I'm still in the process of discovering how to do that. But I know that... I know guaranteed if I met the Shea Hillenbrand now playing Major League Baseball, the Shea Hillenbrand playing Major League Baseball would have wrote Shea Hillenbrand now a million dollar check and say, come with me, bro. Come with me because I knew I would have made 50 to 75 more million. And it, it, and that's where it's at. So uh, right now, I just shayhillenbrand.co is my website for speaking. And I have a coaching program for uh, world-class athletes and leaders. Uh, I'm talking about the business people that are, that are having success, but they can't find identity outside what they do. They go to bed, uh, you know, like empty, and they wake up wondering what their purpose of life is. Kind of like the stuff that the avatar is a Shea Hillen brand that, that play, but there's so many people out there that, that can relate to that stuff. So I have an eight-week coaching course for them, and then I just speak all over. And uh, I have a, a nonprofit foundation called Against All Odds where I do that for the youth. Same thing to help them find leadership skills, to help them find uh, self-confidence, all the things that baseball has to offer through that platform. So super excited to do that. I was just with uh, 200 kids last week up in Vancouver, or excuse me, all over British Columbia at a baseball camp. I was in the batting cage uh, from six in the morning till, till 10 o'clock at night. And, and I'm seeing a common theme with all these youth players. Now, these are high school players and college players. Like they even know, they don't even know their swing. And I asked him, I was like, how do you know what to work on with your swing if you don't even know your swing? Because they've been taught and thrown so much, has so much information thrown at them that they don't even know what to do. And they, they, they're trying to find their swing off the tee. They're trying to find their swing off front toss. They're trying to find their swing off coach pitch and BP on the field. And these coaches are expecting them to go to home plate and have self-confidence in the game. It's impossible. I have to be an idiot. So I'm trying to speak life in the coaches and do it in a kind way, in a, in a way to where it's like, okay, I want to challenge your perspective because that's where I believe the problem is in new sports is with the coaches. It's not the parents. It's not the players. It's the byproduct of, of the coaching and, and the money that's able to be made in the industry so i'm keeping it super simple i'm using super simple things that i use playing major league baseball when i train and what i've discovered through that process is simple doesn't sell so uh i tell the kids i could teach your mom how to teach you how to hit right now the foundation of mastering hitting the ball off the tee and mastering hitting front toss but we want the rap soda machine we want the exit velo we want the launch angle we want all this information because we think that that's what the scouts are looking for that's what the recruiters are looking for so um i'm just trying to uh not not, not trying to go to the extent of jeff fry but uh, i'm trying to use it in a positive way so we can make a positive impact uh and, and just try to educate i just want to educate people and and uh, i use my vulnerability with my 
my story, and that's what connects with the coaches in the position got, of, uh, of being able to help them out. You go back to you're talking about being the knowing your knowing your swing right before. What are you going to work on it? You know that that comes back to full circle about what you talked about with you. I was trying to you didn't you weren't working on you right your swing. How are you supposed to fix? everything else until you know yourself. And I think that's what, what, you know, what your platform is. I didn't, you didn't know yourself until you hit the bottom. Right. And now you've taken that. And it's amazing now how it correlates to the baseball side. I mean, you talked to, you said you bought a, a farm for a zoo, you know, and what is that? What is, what are zoos great for helping kids? Right. That's part of your platform. You didn't think about it at the time, but look at, you know, look at what it, look at where it's led to now of, of, of the farm of, of how, of how we teach, you know, but you're still, you know, we, you talk about just about the hitting side, knowing, knowing themselves, right. They'd want to be everybody else, but themselves just be yourself. And I think that's what your, your platform is, is telling guys and kids, parents, whatever, to be yourself first. Don't try and be something you're not. Right. And it, and it, and it made you ball up. Cause I'm sure you probably, if, if you could go back, would you punch yourself in the face? This Shea Hillenbrand to the old Shea Hillenbrand? No, no. What I do is I'd hug him. Cause that's all I needed was a hug. Understanding like, it's all right. I get it. I get why you're acting the way you are. Right. So it's just like, like the, the way I acted playing major, it's the last thing I wanted to do. I got kicked off my junior high team, my high school team, my junior college team. I got kicked off all my teams, but I was so good that when I gave, I was given the chance, I performed where they, they had to play me. I got kicked out of five, six games a year in the minor leagues. And I, I got in fights with the managers because I couldn't articulate the passion and the energy and, and the love and admiration. Like I will, I'm going to war. When I'm facing that pitcher, my mindset is I'm going to crush you, kill you. I mean, win that battle. Like if I don't win that battle i'm throwing my bat at you i don't care and it's just like whoa 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 dude take a step back harness that what's what's coming from that so that pain and that hurt and that shame and that guilt all that stuff and resentment that i had up inside myself and that's that's the number one thing i ask all my clients that i coach now outside of the game is like how do you know what you want if you don't know who you are how do you know you want that Lambo or that house or those shoes or that watch or all that stuff that I fly in those private jets and everything? How do you know if you don't know who you are? And inside the batter's cage with the players that I work with at the youth level, I do it. Not, I don't do it that much, but when I do it, I, I feel like a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon that comes in. I always ask them, like, how do you know what to work on your swing if you don't know your swing? And, and if you can get out of your own way then you will be able to reach your fullest potential. You'll be able to add the biggest, greatest value you can to yourself because so many of these players are lumped in the 80 percentile. Like if you just look at them, their stats and where they swing the bat and the results that they're getting, there's so many kids lumped in the 80 percentile. But in order to go to the next level, you have to separate yourself and you have to concentrate. And you have to become abnormal. The reason why we got paid so much playing Major League Baseball is because we were abnormal. Abnormality pays. So how do you find abnormality? You find that by being your unique value proposition is like, who are you? What I bring to the table is unique. It's different. Like I'm going out there every day. And if I could be myself and start uh, uh developing and designing myself then i can maintain that then everything just comes oh my gosh man it's just you just go to the next level and so many people get lumped in the 80 percentile that should be in the top 15 that should be in the top 10 they have that ability but they just don't have the understanding so once we understand something it stirs up a hunger inside ourselves to pursue it even more and i see it time and time again there's no magic potions you know that there's no magic potions to, to swing the baseball bat to be able to go out there and have success it's just understanding who you are, get out of your own way, and, and train you, not try to conform yourself to somebody else. And so many people try to conform, and I think that's what I did, and I think that's what uh, I am. I, I don't fit in. We're playing the same game, bro, but I'm not going to play it the same way that you play it, like you in general. So that's what separates yourself, but you can't do that unless you really know who you are. And by, when I meant punch in the face, it was more of like a, just a wake up call type of thing of just, yeah, really? I would have hit him in the head yeah. with a bat. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Are you good now? You know, help, help you know, wake, wake, you know, wake me up just to, you know, and it's hard though, right? It's just you know, the little slap in the face to, to get everything going. Um, you know, and like I said, where, you know, where you've, where you are now in the, in this journey. Um, I just, I just, one more question I want to ask, you know, you, you talked about your dad a lot. Have you, has that relationship been mended? Is your dad still around? Is it, or is it just something that's, um, I mean, you don't have to answer if it's, you know, like I said, I know it's, it, it, it's a deep no, subject. Is, is it, I mean, no. have you done, have you been able to right? you know, they always talk about it, the process of you know, the first step towards recovery is admitting you have a problem, you know, and the steps that you have 
have you made that contact? I mean, has, has that, uh, has that relationship been mended or is it, is it in process or? Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking that. Cause I think this will relate to a lot of men that are watching this or, or hearing this. And, and I'm telling you, dude, like my parents were married 54 years, 52 years before my father passed away and he passed away uh, four years ago now. And like that all-star game that I flew to in my private jet, I didn't even invite my parents to it. I, I cut my parents out of my whole career. My dad's at the top deck of the stadium looking down and, and telling the ushers and telling the fans, that's my boy down there playing third base. And he was so proud of me. Uh, and and they're looking at him like, dude, like, like well, if that's your boy. Why are you up here? And, I, and I'm playing third base in the all-star game when I came into the game in the ninth inning. And, and I'm looking up knowing that he's up there and like, I freaking hate that guy. I hate that guy. It's perspective formed from the pain points, from the story and the, uh, and the experience that you have in your life, that, that the story, regardless if it's true or not, that's your story and your perspective and your, and your truth is where you operate from. And my truth was not the truth because my dad moved us from, California to Arizona to give me a chance to play major league baseball. And I didn't know that he didn't know how to communicate because he was dealing with the same struggles and challenges with his father and pulling his mom out of a bar at 13 and 14 years old and the stuff that he went through. And he was like a white knuckler. His mom was a, 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 an extreme drunk. And he says, I'm never going to touch us a drop of alcohol. And, 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 and he, he was just, just, he'd lash out because he, he, he had these demons and these struggles that, that I was dealing with. And, and once I, allowed myself to go there and really go back and see what really happened talking to my mom and and experiences like that with when i was younger um the the challenge that we have is when we go back and try to unpack these bags and, and try to go back and revisit these these experiences there's so much so many negative emotions pain and hurt and guilt and shame that are attached to these emotions that you're going to have to to, to to deal with and handle and, and process through to be able to give yourself a chance to transform and shift that perspective the power lies in your perspective man and i can't tell you that enough and and once i did that like i i, I realized oh my gosh my dad really did love me and i didn't have to drink it i didn't have to have all the success and 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 my wife Kristen was one of those strategic people that god brought into my life right after um i found myself off the floor of the van like like it's just like a story it's like a movie my life and and you can't even explain like how she would even be in my life and she says you got to reconnect with your dad nope you got to reconnect with your dad nope you got to reconnect with your dad nope and not because of, of whatever but because of the pain and that, that that all that was attached to that and and i'm saying in my mind the story is like that's why i did so bad at major league baseball that's why i left this and trying to justify everything and and be the victim and and and, and i finally sat my father down at his supper table and 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 i and i shared my story with him and 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 he started tearing up and, and he said son we've been trying to tell you this your whole life and and it was uh it was it was challenging i went over to try to give him a hug and, and tell him that i love him and i admire him and he's such a role model for me because when i really look past all that stuff that i formed in my mind this guy's an amazing human being and, they, and he wouldn't even let me hug him and he was still fighting. He couldn't, he couldn't handle it. He's like, get away from me. And, and it, like, it's just like a defense mechanism and, and we reconciled. And, and uh, uh, about three months after that, uh, he came to my house and he said, he said, son, I need to talk to you. And, and he sat at my supper table and I was like, ah, oh, all this pain and resentment, all this, ah, oh, my whole life since I was like in middle school and, and high school and all this stuff was brewing. And he says, son, I'm proud of you. And that's all I ever wanted was for him to say that. And then I whipped out my phone real quick and I said, dad, dad, could you say that again? He's like, no, I'll never say that again. You know, whatever. So it was just this funny thing. And then at three in the morning, my mom called me about six months after that time. And, and, uh, she said, come over to the house. Your dad just died. Um, and he was, uh, donated his body to science to help other people. He was laying on the floor and I reached down and kissed him. I said, dad, I'm going to use my voice to change the world. And since then, if I didn't do that, if I didn't humble myself and my older brother didn't do it and he's dealing with pain and, and I would, I don't know what it would be if I didn't do that. And so if there's any listeners out there that or viewers out there that right now is like, dude, like my relationship with my father or my relationship with my mother or whoever that might be, uh, you got to, you got to, to give yourself that chance because when it's gone, it's gone. You can't do it after that. And, and I'm so grateful. And, and, and that's what gives me the strength now to do what I do is that, I know I'm making my dad proud.
and it's you know it, it it's amazing how all it was was just that like you said it, it's it's the, the the pain that that's that you're feeling but you're able to say and like you said that's all you sometimes you want to hear from your, your parents is hey i'm proud that's of you it. right you know it's that's uh, it <laughs> it's, you know as a kid you know your parents would yell at you whatever this and that but what's what's what, what i think the most hurtful thing i think your parents could ever say to you i mean and i you'd feel a bit is i'm disappointed right your parents would say and you're like oh gosh what did i do and it, and you're right though the amount what we think and what we know are two different things uh, there's a good quote that i that i that i use to talk about a lot is that we, we teach what we know but we reproduce who we are and you think about that of where so you know you you've down your dad dealt with it and then you're dealing with it but it's up to you now from where you are to stop that cycle to be able to help those people moving forward right because like you said your dad you said you, you talked and it was what three months four months later and he passed yes i mean in the middle of the night yeah and that, so, so i mean that's it's, it's, it's one of those things where you know that's that you don't ever want to have that what if moment because we all as, as as athletes we think about that you know we tell our kids don't ever have that what if moment what if i'd have done something different what if i'd have been here what if you can't mm -hmm. live that you don't want to live that way you don't want to wake up one morning and say if only say no what can you know instead you wake up what can i do today to change people how can i help somebody today and that's all we're here for more and that and, you know that's it but as long but enjoying doing it right because that's just the, what what we do that's why we we play sports to enjoy it right because it's it's fun it's we're able to to see things and do things and meet people we, we never would have thought we would have met right playing baseball i never thought i would go west of the mason dixon line of the mississippi going over there i mean heck now we're traveling around the world playing playing a game that you know we never thought we'd do and, and the amount of people that you reach and touch it's the sky's the limit especially with, with you now with with the platform you have and you know one person sees this, right? We've we've done our job of sitting here and doing it, and that's and that's all it is. And then that one person knows somebody. That's all it is, you know. That's and, all and, it is, and, it, and it's the beauty of it, right? It's it's you, you made a mess with the mess that was in. You, you made something beautiful out of it, and that's sometimes it takes you know, like you said, fall on your face for you to realize, well, gosh, I got to get out of my own damn way, right? We seem to do that all the time, don't we? Hundred percent. Neither life will humble you, or you have to humble yourself. And I'm really trying to do everything I can to help people humble themselves because I like what drives me, brother, is I don't want people to feel the pain that I felt on top of the world. Not just going through life, but I was on top and living that dream that so many people, whatever that 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 industry or dream or vision that they have, like we we're at the apex of that. Somebody did that mountain doing it. And I know there's so many players right now in the big leagues that are just like lost in the shuffle going through what I went through. And I know it's there. And, and if I could just shed light on them and get them to form just a tad bit of different perspective, I think they'll have uh, more self-confidence in self and understand that really at the end of the day, does it matter? Does it matter if I go all for it? Does it matter if I, if I play on after this season, it, it doesn't because we have all the training. Like you can't get the training that we got on a major league baseball field at a prestigious institution, Harvard, Yale, all that stuff. We know how to perform under pressure, navigate failure, go out there and, and pivot. The biggest thing is pivoting, going to, okay, I can't do it this way. I got to do it this way. And, and being in a team environment and waking up day in and day out and keeping at it. Like everything I put myself to now, um, I have success with it. And I know so many players out there can do the same thing. So hopefully some players are watching this podcast as well. So. Yeah, and it's we just all we want to do is 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 help, right? That's 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 what we're here for. You know, you, you know, we got little ones, right? And it, the, the thing is, the beauty of it is, it's not something that's that's forced on people, right? People ask the question. All you're doing is talking, right? We can't, you know, there's you, you're talking about how God, you know, affected you, picked you up up out of that van. Uh, there's a good painting, a Holman Hunt painting of of Jesus standing at the door. It says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." Right. If you ever notice, there's no handle on the door. He's, you know, and I think that's you. You're not. You're not opening the door into people. People, are, you're, you're just knocking. And when they open the door, that's when you sit there and that's when you give your story and tell people. Let me tell you a story about where I've been and what I can do. And that's all it is, right, Shay? It's not. It's not. It's not. You're. You know. You're not standing on your soapbox and just and just and just preaching about. It. No, you're. You're. You're going about it. But when somebody asks the question. Granted, some people aren't going to like the answer, right? Because uh, you're for no, you, of course, you open the door, and I answer it. Some people aren't going to like what you have to say, but you know what? It's going to be a, a well thought out, processed 
thing, just like hitting. This, right, we talked about you roll out of bed and hit. You know, Shay, you can roll out of bed and you can talk about what you've been through. And that's all it is, man. That's, it's, it's just reaching out and having fun doing it and teaching our kids and, you know, and their kids and the kids around them and the people around them and how much, you know, what we can do to help. That's all it's about, right? Because more and more people are coming out and talking about it and, and asking for help, which is a good thing. And that's all you can ask for, right? Yeah, exactly. And you, you hit on the nose when Jesus is knocking, you, you do physically, you have to open the door. You can't just, he won't, he won't come in. He's there. Uh, he's a gentleman and, and you, you have to open it. And that's, that's for some people, that's the hardest thing to do in the world because now you're opening yourself up to vulnerability and transparency. And, and so many of us are concerned what other people think about ourselves. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because so many people, uh, 80% of people are, uh, don't care about what you're doing. And, uh, and the other 20% are glad it's not them as they're going through it. So <laughs> if we could just do the little things to help and band together and, and, and provide those, those opportunities, those resources, I think that's what it's about at the end of the day. So if, if, I knew that Shay, uh, when I played would, would appreciate that. Yeah. And you, you know, we always, you know, we talk about with baseball in general, if we're, we're best at our craft when we're able to slow the game down, right. To able to, mm-hmm. right. And that's just kind of about what you talk about. You, you're you're telling people, you're getting them, to teaching them to be able to to slow down, right? You, it's not you don't have to be in such a hurry, right? To be able to control it more than letting it control you, and that's the problem, right? We get base. You start mm-hmm. thinking too much. Right? What do they say? If you think, you're dead, and that's and that's what you're trying to. That's what you're teach. You're you're teaching now with what you're doing, carrying it from baseball into this platform you have of, of, uh, of the mental health issues that you've dealt with and, and helping those down the road. So, you know, you know, Shay, I commend you for, for that and, and the abilities that you've had to do that, the people you've reached out to and continue to reach, um, you know, the sky's the limit, man. And, you know, I said, I commend you for that. And, and, you know, looking forward to seeing where this journey ends, right? Because you're continuing to write this Shay Hillenbrand story. Yeah. The baseball player, Shay Hillenbrand's gone yeah we can google that but that's not the story people want to hear they, they don't want to hear google stories they want to hear <laughs> the true honesty shay hill and brand man i am the biggest screw up and you know what i'm good i've moved on from it and that's it if people want to dwell on it that's fine but i'm moving forward so you know you know if i could i'd give you a big hug through the <laughs> through the camera since like i said now you're I smiling you. I wonder, you know now like i said if i'd run and pass you at third base now i'd want to give you a hug as opposed to who's that guy over there? he just doesn't seem that yeah you're good like person what's out. wrong yeah. with this guy man so <laughs> but no man and, and any way i can help out you know there's we have a lot of uh things here in, in the dfw areas and charity stuff that um especially with that with with that mental health side of it man i'd love to put you in touch with them um, there's some guys i have forwarded on to you like i said look forward to seeing where this journey is going to end up man absolutely absolutely and, and slowing it down like you said is the biggest thing there's so many of us when we try to slow it down we have to deal with who we really are and we want to keep going fast because we don't want to deal with that so if we could slow it down on the baseball field, that's where it lies. So, man, the best of luck with all this, Shay. Like I said, we'll be in touch, man. We'll, think we'll get you back on. Hopefully, you come out here, speak to some I'm people. Come out there. I want to come out and see you, man. I know, man. Come great. out and play some golf. And I think just the guys in general, even even the guys that never really, never really even played against you or played with you, but, uh, man, just being around them, right, just the clubhouse type of feel. So, you know, we'll have to figure something out. Heck, even come out that way and come out and play some golf as well. So, man, but I appreciate Absolutely. you coming on today. And uh, like I said, we'll be spreading this message and sharing this as much as we can and uh, seeing how many lives you can touch. Absolutely. Thanks, brother. Appreciate yeah, I appreciate it, Shay. Thanks, buddy.